Hello and welcome back to this Redshift material tutorial. I'm going to break down how to make this Redshift material in Cinema 4D. I'm not going to build it out from scratch. We're just going to kind of go into the node system, look at what each one is doing, check out the parameters. We might even tweak stuff and see the effects that has because this was a completely experimental material I made and ended up to look pretty cool. Let's just jump straight in. And so the basis of this material is really around the noise and just understanding how blending modes work and color. Turn off our displacement. Um, that is really where the material come together. You can kind of see these, you know, these colors are really cool, but when, you, when you're when you using the displacement here, it just kind of pushes all those colors out and you just get this really nice fall off in the material and this really kind of grungy displacement. So let's go with solar displacement here. Okay, cool. So we have our displacement here. What are we using? We are using Luca and we've changed around a few things. So the scale, for instance, this would have been at one. So I scaled it out so you get less repetition. You get this wave-like displacement across the whole sphere. And make sure you have your redshift tag on and also make sure you have tessellation enabled and your displacement parameter ticked. Just an important note there. Okay, let's get back into our displacement. Just simple max on noise, which you can get from here and just drag it in and then put your displacement node on. And uh, by playing with this, you, you know, we can get some cool results. You get all the standard um, max on displacement presets, which is quite cool if we were to put our material back into that. And yeah, you get a completely different kind of look with that, which is quite nice, but I like the Luca, so we're gonna keep the Luca. Okay, let's break down our colors. I'm going to turn the displacement off for now, so we can have a look at how the colors are working and blending with one another. To make the color blend into itself and just kind of mix, you have this kind of almost like petrol-like look to how the uh, aberration around the ends of the, the colors are working. So this color layer node in Redshift is great because make all these noise materials and plug them right in to here and you also have a mask option we won't go into that now and see as it's just like Photoshop or After Effects layer 2 is above layer 1. So layer two here is above layer one. This is layer one, this is layer two. And we're using the blending mode difference. And if we were to use a different blending mode, you get something completely different. So it's quite versatile with how you can work. So let's solo our layer one. And this is just these two colors um, blending into one another. And we're using wavy turbulence. And we've set the scale to two. If we go one here, you see you get more repetition five okay, less repetition okay now the next layer we're blending on top of this is the maxon noise 2 and this is just completely experimental to be blending these two in difference mode because these are such harsh colors my thought was you might get something interesting with how the colors are blending and amalgamating with one another we're just using the noise type epoxo and the overall scale I've set to 2.2. If we were to set this to 5, it's going to scale out like we've seen with the other ones. If we go down, you're going to get lots of itty bitty repetition and all these kind of ridges appearing. So let's just set it back, back into our color layer. And let's see if we were to just change some of the parameters with this blend, what it would look like. And that's quite cool. So we've set the overall scale on our Maxon Noise 2 in our layer 2 to 10. And you're, you're getting, I suppose you're getting more separation because of the blending mode difference. But let's set it back here. Then to, to kind of tell Redshift that we want this blend of color layer to be identified as a, a texture for the Redshift material node, I plug this into a color node. Um, and that kind of, you know, that tells Redshift this is a material now. Um, it kind of brings it together. And we plugged it into our Redshift material, into our color parameter. Um, sometimes these textures fail to update and it can be very confusing. Let's just try and trigger a... There we go, cool. Now, um, let's just turn on our displacement again. It will be important for this section. 
cool. Now, um, there is a node in Redshift called AO Generator, Ambient Occlusion, and you can see we're getting all these like nice kind of crevices and shadows. If I was to take out this node, you lose that information. And this is a really helpful node in Redshift because, you know, if I was to zoom out here, it looks a bit, bit too bright, doesn't it? And I mean, we can change the colors and stuff, but we want to get that 3D soft shadow. We want to get those shadows in 3D working. We don't want to kind of be adding them in post. So for our roughness, because we have a certain way the displacement is working, I just used the max on noise parameters and plug that into the roughness channel for our redshift material. And that is pretty much it. It was a bit of experimenting um, and playing around. But if we were to kind of add more and push this material a bit more, I think, you know, it looks a bit flat in its color. Like there's not much reflection. It could be better in that regard. So if we were to add maybe some, just a little bit of coating, let's see what that does. And that's a little bit too shiny, but you can see you're getting some reflection across the ridges more, and that is quite cool. Let's bring this down to 0.6. Looks too wet still. 0.5. And that, you know, that looks a bit better. We could even bring it down a bit more. It's still a bit too wet looking. I need to change the roughness on the coating. Actually bring that back up to 0.7. That's quite nice, actually. Maybe point one. Cool. So we've just kind of changed that a little bit. Maybe bring this up to back to point five. Um, and you can see you're just getting some reflection on those ridges a little bit more. If we were to turn back into our base properties. See what happens when we give this a sheen. And add, maybe take a color from here, darken it, maybe brighten it a little bit. Cool. Let's add that 0.5, bring that down to 0.1. And we're just kind of playing with the parameters to see how we can push this material even further. Um, and if we were to change our AO around, because it looks a little bit more, I suppose, like it reacts to light a little bit more now. Um, and we could change the, the other thing about this uh, ambient occlusion node in Redshift. We can change the fall off so you can add less spread to your ambient occlusion. So you can see the occlusions just, it's coming more down. So it's using the light information from Redshift um, and applying it in from that node. And if we bring it up to 0.8, you get more of the spread, which is just completely more realistic. Um, a recommendation, uh, it's a mistake I made here, is maybe don't go, don't use uh, just black, uh, get the color and just bring it right down. Just make sure it's a darker version of the material color. This way, it, the shadows will look just a tad bit more realistic. Uh, let's bring this back down to 0.8, just to kind of bring those shadows in a bit more. Yeah, so that's kind of it really for from the material standpoint. It's, it's, it's a, just about, I find with Redshift, it's about experimenting um, and playing around. Like if we were to change the colors here, you're just gonna get those fractured bits of color are going to pop more. Uh, let's go something a little bit more maybe obnoxious here. And then you've changed the other one. So it's really just about experimenting. Um, so I hope you've got something from this. Uh, if you have any other questions or you feel I haven't covered something, uh, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.